Okay, we've put it off as long as possible. We need to talk about user management. If you were going to write your own user management system, you'd have to worry about how you're going to store passwords, how you're going to do user verification, how you're going to send emails and SMS messages, how you're going to do a ton of things around administration and things like that. Luckily, AWS gives us Cognito, and Cognito is going to do just about all of that for us. So in this section, we're going to set up Cognito, and by the end, we're basically going to have a complete app. So let's get started. It's finally time to start adding some identity to our app. To do this, we're going to use AWS's Cognito service. And as usual, we're going to look at what Cognito can do before we jump in and start using it. Cognito isn't really one service. It's more like three that all operate under the same umbrella. The first service, and the one we'll be using, is user pools. User pools provide your app with its own identity. This means that your users have usernames and passwords just for your application or site. You can create groups and manage permissions at a fairly fine level. There's also quite a few options for customization, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. The next service is Federated Identity. This is not quite as detailed as the user pools. This service can allow you to authenticate users from a variety of identity providers, such as Facebook, Google, Amazon, Twitter, and others. Using federated identity, you don't have a lot of information about your users, but your application is available to a very large number of people without the overhead of sign-up. And finally, there's the Sync service. Sync can only be used with federated identity pools. With Sync, you can synchronize data across devices and associate it with the federated account. This can be pretty useful when you're writing a mobile app, but it's less useful in a browser, though you do have the option of local storage. Since we're using user pools, we're going to spend most of our time talking about them. There are a lot of features, so we're not going to go into too much depth. Still, we want to give you an idea of what is available, even if we're not using it for our project. We're going to break the features into a few different groups. There are definitely related features, even if they're under different menu items. The first group is user information. Right from the top, you have the ability to see your users and groups. This is really useful for user management and creating groups with particular roles. You can also look at individual users to see more information about them, reset their passwords, or even disable and delete the user. The other part of user information is the attributes section. From here, you can determine if users log on with usernames, email addresses, or phone numbers. You can also define which standard attributes users should have, such as real names and locations and things like that. And on top of that, you can always define your own attributes for the users too. Next, we'll get into security. And since Cognito user pools manage a complete user directory along with credentials, security is important. There are a few different aspects to security. The most basic aspect of security is password policy. Now, we're not going to get into a debate over whether special characters are really useful in making passwords more secure. You can make that decision yourself. The policy section allows you to specify some requirements on the passwords for your application. Next, we have multi-factor authentication, or MFA for short, and verifications. Multi-factor authentication is when you use an app or a text message to get a special code to verify your login. You can configure whether that's supported for your user pool. You can also configure how certain you want to be about the information that users provide. Specifically, you might want to make sure that their email address or phone number is correct by doing some verification. Thankfully, you don't have to figure out how to send email or text messages. Cognito takes care of that for you. Finally, we have advanced security. This is a very new feature that has no free tier and costs more than standard Cognito. So consider that your warning if you decide to give it a try. The idea of the advanced security features is that they act as an intelligent layer of protection on top of your user pool. They'll look for suspicious logins and help you determine how much verification of identity your users need. It looks pretty cool, but again, it's going to cost you money. Next, we have some more superficial customization options. The most superficial customization is the messages that are sent to email addresses for verifications or invitations. You can give the emails your own custom flair so they feel like a part of your app. Next, we have triggers, and of course, they are Lambda functions that can be triggered at certain times. AWS is really putting these types of things all over the place so that you can do all sorts of background work that way. And finally, we have the devices section. This basically lets you determine whether devices can be remembered by the user pool. This is really only useful for MFA, multi-factor authentication, when you want to allow users to bypass it by remembering the device they're using. 
There are a few other things here that don't really fit into a good category. The first of these is app clients. And we care about this because we'll need a client for our website. Next, we have tags. We've seen tags in a lot of other places in AWS so far, like DynamoDB and API Gateway and Lambda, and this is no different. These are just convenient ways of grouping resources together. Last but not least, we have analytics. Analytics is a way to really track your users. You can set up campaigns for your users. This feature uses Pinpoint, which will probably cost you money as well. So once again, this is your warning about possibly leaving the free tier if you use that feature. Cognito also comes with a fall OAuth 2.0 suite. This is especially useful when trying to grant access to your app from other applications like Facebook apps. We're not going to mess around much in this area, so we won't go into any more depth right now. We also have some options for federation. And if that sounds strange, it's okay. Yes, Cognito has federated identity, but this is not it. Federation in user pools provides a way to log into the user pool using another identity provider. The set of available providers is more limited here than federated identity. On top of that, you create a record in your user pool for the user still, even though they're authenticating it with another service. In short, the difference between federation in user pools and using a federated identity pool is how much you know about the user. Federated identities have a couple more options than the federation in user pools, but it doesn't really have as much information about the users. You can see that there are more options for how to authenticate with a federated identity pool, but the management is more about tracking than management. Once you have your federated identities set up, you can also do sync. Again, sync allows you to store data against the user profile in the federated identities and access it from any device. It's kind of like having a DynamoDB table to store the information without the hassle of having to deal with DynamoDB. That's all the detail we'll hit on federated identities in this course because we're not using them. The main reason we're not using them is that the API Gateway's Cognito Authorizer only supports user pools. You can use federated identities with the API Gateway, but you're actually getting temporary AWS credentials for the user rather than using an actual authorization header. If there's anything you're interested in using in federated identities, but you still want to have your own users, that's okay too. You'll notice that Cognito is an option for an identity provider. You can basically get the best of both worlds. So now that we've gone over the basics, we can create our user pool in the next lesson.